Hey, what up, fish friends? Michael here with Fresh Flow Aquatics. I'll be going over three and a half must have plants for low tech planted tanks. These plants are all easy to find, do really well in a variety of conditions, and fill in quickly. Plus, they cover your entire tank from foreground to midground and background areas. The last half plant fills in a little too quickly, which is why some people don't like it, and the reason I've put it in as a half plant. The first plant, Valisneria, is a genus of aquatic plants that commonly goes by eelgrass. This is a longtime favorite of the planted aquarium hobby and is popular for a few reasons. First of all, there's so many different types and they're all known to be really hardy and adaptable to various water parameters. Because they naturally occur in places with high flow, they have extensive root systems and that keeps them from getting uprooted. They send long, mostly flat and slender leaves to the water's surface. There are some exceptions like Valisneria nana, which produce round, grass-like blades. This plant is found throughout the world. Even the smallest Valisneria plant will grow about 8 inches or 20 centimeters. Most species will grow so tall that their leaves will end up billowing along the water's surface. Large species like Valisneria gigantea will grow to 20 inches or 50 centimeters long. They can grow in most lighting conditions, though I prefer moderate. It helps to keep them stay healthy and vibrant, but limits extremely rapid growth that you'd see with a high lighting tank. It can grow in virtually any substrate, sand, soil, or gravel. If you're serious about growing plants though, I'd give it some soil, either aquarium soil or garden soil capped with sand. You don't really need to add much liquid fertilizer to tanks with val, but it's a good idea to add root tabs since they're such heavy root feeders. There's no need for CO2. Val actually becomes a little too weedy in my opinion when you give it too much. It can really take over a tank. Valisneria does not like low pH, but still does well in a high range of conditions. It does best around 5 to 15 in terms of general hardness, but can still survive outside that range. It lives in cold to warm conditions and likes moderate to high flow. Some things to note are that Val doesn't do well with big doses of glutaraldehyde, the active ingredient in most algicides or biologically available sources of carbon for plants like Excel. This tank gets one quarter of the recommended Excel dose and the Val is clearly happy, but too much could cause it to melt away. To trim, you could use shears, but that takes too long for me, so I just come along the top and use my hands to trim a dozen plants in one go. You need to kind of stabilize the bottom uh, where you're gripping the plant and then pinch the top off, if that makes sense. I'm not just pulling, otherwise you could uproot the plants. Usually the blades that get trimmed stop growing, so you may need to eventually clip them at the base because they're sometimes more prone to algae like Blackbeard. Uh, than growing blades are. To propagate it, all you do is take these little side shooters, rip off the connector bits and plant them elsewhere, or you could just let them grow where they sprout anyways. The reason that they send side shoots like this is because they grow in areas of high flow in the wild. That allows the baby plants time to set roots instead of getting washed away in the current. Besides the fact that it's such a gorgeous and easy plant to take care of, I love getting lost in time watching it sway in the current, especially along the top of the aquarium. It's also one of the best plants you can get to provide cover for fish and promote breeding. It's definitely a must have for any low tech planted tank. Heteranthera zosterifolia. This plant is commonly known as stargrass and is truly a gorgeous plant. The leaves are papery thin and soft to the touch with light green top and almost a black hue along the edges on the underside, which is easy to mistake for uh, blackbeard algae. It grows in regions with slow moving or stagnant water. If you've watched the BBC's Green Planet, there was an episode about aquatic plants and Heteranthera zosterifolia can be seen growing just like this with a small base truncating up towards the top. The other way you could grow it is just to have a number of plants uh, or a number of stems with uh, a limited amount of stems or heads on each stem. 
You could also even use this planting method with really short stems to grow a carpet of star grass, though that's a little harder to pull off in a low-tech tank. This plant is from the Amazon basin, specifically the marshes of Brazil. It can grow up to a foot tall or 30 centimeters, but it can also be grown as a carpet. Even though it'll live in most lighting conditions, moderate to high is better for vibrant growth. You should give it some aquarium soil or regular garden soil capped with sand. It does well with root tabs and liquid fertilizer, though this tank's water column is kept pretty lean and it still does well. It doesn't need CO2 to grow like this, but if you want it to grow crazy dense in carpeting, then you probably would want to add CO2. It does well in a wide range of pH 5 to 8, as well as general hardness, can do well with pretty much whatever you throw at it. It'll live in a wide range of temperatures 50 to 80 Fahrenheit or 10 to 30 Celsius. It does well with moderate to slow flow. In high flow it can grow horizontally and leggy and it just doesn't look as good. To propagate this plant all you gotta do is pluck or trim some heads and replant them in the soil. It's a pretty low maintenance plant in this tank but in high tech tanks it grows super fast. It's almost a bit of a nuisance having to trim it back on a weekly to bi-weekly basis. I like to use this plant as a mid-ground to background plant but like I said, you could even grow it as a carpet if you wanted. Pearlweed, also known as Micranthemum micranthemoides, is one of the hardiest little plants you'll come across. It's really perfect for someone looking to set up their first planted aquarium. Unlike a lot of other stem plants, this one is really easy to keep as a foreground plant. It's bright green and has tons of tiny little leaves. It grows really thick, providing terrific coverage for fry and baby shrimp. It originates from slow-flowing waters in Florida, southeastern U.S. It can grow to 2 to 6 inches or 5 to 15 centimeters tall. It does well in most lighting conditions, but moderate to high lighting is best for vibrant growth. You can put it in any type of substrate, sand or gravel would work, but soil will yield better results. It does appreciate nutrients in the water column as well as the substrate. It doesn't need CO2 to grow, even though a lot of the online plant stores will say it does best with CO2. It grows in really thick and vibrant mats without CO2, just like this tank. It'll survive in a wide range of pH 5 to 8, even outside of that range. And the same thing with GH, pretty much whatever you throw at it, it'll do fine. Temperature 50 to 80 Fahrenheit or 10 to 30 Celsius with moderate to slow flow. Pearlweed should seriously be the go-to plant for anyone who's just getting started with their first planted tank. It's so versatile, does terrific in a wide range of conditions, and is very hard to kill. It propagates like other stem plants, you just need to take a little clipping and plant it in substrate. Alright, time for the last half plant, which is duckweed. I know that some of you are already rolling your eyes, but I think duckweed is really a terrific addition to any low-tech planted tank for a couple reasons. First of all, it blocks out light to some degree, allowing plants to grow but preventing algae from forming. Second, it helps to keep conditions stable. If nutrients build up in a tank, then duckweed reproduces like crazy, keeping the water column clean, also telling you, hey, there's something going on with your nutrients. Most aquarium fish really love to have some sort of growth along the top of the tank. It encourages them to come out, makes them feel more at home. Downside is that it grows crazy fast, like really ridiculously fast. So fast, in fact, that a lot of people hate it and they won't let it anywhere near their tank. It's also a pain in the butt to remove from a tank. It's not impossible to remove, but if you miss one little piece, it'll slowly and then rampantly take over again. So I remove handfuls of duckweed every two weeks, almost eliminating it, and then it spreads like crazy when I come back. I really like that because it gives the plants in this tank about a week of high lighting and then a week of dimmer lighting, and I never have to worry about algae in here. All in all, I give this tank about 40 minutes of maintenance every other week. I do 50% water change, remove a bunch of plant material, scrub the glass, and pet some cats. 
I set this tank up at Noco Cat Cafe in Loveland, Colorado. If you need to pet some cats or are interested in adopting one, then this is the place to go. I have so many terrific service locations, but this one's really hard to beat. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like and sub button. It helps YouTube to know that I'm creating valuable content, which encourages me to make more videos for you. See ya!